crimson stain he washed it white as snow oh jesus paid it all all to him i owe oh sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Welcome you. My name is Shaiju. I am so glad that you are able to join us on this special service. And we are going to um, have something very exciting. Uh, I hope you've already enjoyed what's been happening and there's more coming. And I don't want you to miss that. Today, I'm excited 
there are pastors that are also joining our program this this evening or whatever time zone you're watching us from. I want to introduce to you Pastor Sean, Pastor Tony, and Pastor Chris. They are our community pastors doing a wonderful job in different parts in ministry. Thank you for joining so us. So glad Very to welcome. be here. Thank so you. Nice. Thank so you. It, the more the merrier. <laughs> <laughs> we we have been in the lockdown for a long time. I know they're opening up for um, 250 people, yeah. but it's it's even worse that there's a lot of your people that are participating and then there's a few that are not able to join. Mm. It, it, it always makes it harder. Yeah. Pastor, the 250 includes the children? Yes, they include the children. Wow. Yes. That if, makes it hard. Yeah, it makes it hard because we have many children yes. in the church. So it's important that everybody registers. But another important thing to point out is that if you've been assigned as, if you're on the worship team, if you're, if you're a greeter, if you're an usher, then your leader, your head of that ministry would already have already. So if you've gone ahead and registered yourself and you know that you are, that you are assigned to work on this Sunday morning, then go ahead, go back online and then register yourself because there are many people who would want to get in onto this service on, on, uh, on Sunday morning, seeing as we're opening up for the first time for, for quite a while. Yes. Pastor Fermi, if somebody has registered and can't make it, what do they do then? And I would unregister yourself. And, and Please, as soon as you know that you, you can't come, then just, just unregister yourself. So it gives somebody else a chance just to, to get in and to receive from, you know, from what God's going to give us on Sunday morning. <laughs> well, that's, that's important because a few times we would uh, have empty chairs and we were like, yes. what happened? And yes. Yeah, yes. So there will be many people who will be upset that they couldn't come. Yeah. So thank you for doing that. So we will continue this format. We still won't be able to meet um, in the evenings of Wednesday services because of the curfew. So we continue the current format until the Lord gives us even bigger breakthroughs. Good Friday gives us a special opportunity for us to talk about what our Lord Jesus did for us on the cross. Mm, yes, yes. And um, there is one verse that really excites me. You know, there is a grace that God has released that. There is really, it's very difficult for us to touch a verse and not spend hours on it. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so, so, I, so, I, so today I want to try and not talk. <laughs> is this the no. day we go to midnight? <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to hear your stories. I want to hear what, what the Lord, how the Lord brought you to the Lord. Yeah. how the cross has been important in your life. Um, but let's start with that one verse in 1 Corinthians, back to the chapter that we have been enjoying in the last few weeks, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And if you will read for me verse 7, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. It says that, chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7, it says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, mm. even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Mm. Go on. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Mm. This verse is critical for us to understand. So if you are here for the first time, we want to welcome you. If you are not a church goer, but somebody took time to invite you to watch this, we want to welcome you. I hope that you will subscribe and you will continue um, on this Jesus journey with us. We are a ministry that loves Jesus and want to experience everything that he has promised for us while we are on earth and then life after to come. Yeah. Yes. So we want to make sure that, that we understand this verse because let me explain to you why. If you see, there are people that don't really understand about Jesus. In fact, one of the areas 
if you meet somebody who who loves to argue against the idea of god one of the arguments will definitely be that how can this god die for man you know it's beyond human logic yeah. so we want to deal with that argument but it is also beyond just human logic this verse is telling us that this was beyond the logic of principalities or strongholds or demonic kingdom the the kingdom of darkness it was not ju- it the idea of jesus dying for the salvation of humanity is not something that confuses the human intellects it is something that puts into disarray even the principalities of darkness demons did not figure it out that's what this verse is saying that if they knew that mystery the mystery of the cross they would have never crucified jesus wow, wow. that's so true yeah. <laughs> yeah we need to try and understand that mystery a little more what was that mystery that if they knew they would have never crucified jesus mm-hmm. what did they not know we have to probe that so, well before we do that <laughs> i i want to want to say were you all born uh, in a christian family i was born into a christian family yes okay what is it was a protestant background yeah a protestant uh, i guess yeah it, it was a protestant a pentecostal i guess you know if you want to tag it with a word so was there a time when you got saved or were you how how did yeah because I, i was i was thinking about this the other day and um growing up in a in a christian home i always had the the idea of christ um and you know like the bible says that jesus stands at the door and he knocks but he won't barge his way through the door he's not the one that opens the door but he's standing at the the door or he was standing at the door of my heart when i was a young child and he was waiting for me to open up the door and and what struck me the other day was that there was been gro- you know growing up in a christian church i knew about jesus but i didn't know jesus there came a point in my life when i was um when i was about 15 years old where i realized that i can't run off the the um the faith of my parents now i have to make a decision for myself for me to follow christ for me to to speak out that jesus is my lord wow. how old were you at that i was 15 and i i remember i was away at um it was in in england i was away at this bible camp we'd have bible camps every year where many many people would come together and i remember um we would share like a, a dormitory a few friends and uh they'd all gone out they were gone to a service and and i hadn't gone to the service for some reason and it was that this time where i had that realization that i had to i had to personally make a choice whether i was going to follow christ whether i was going to have a relationship with christ or whether i would just know about christ so i remember kneeling down in front of my bed and asking you know christ to to save me to and that's when i really came into the realization so it's interesting that i had to do it myself that means you you were a christian born in a christian yeah, family yeah. but still you had to come to a place where you met god yes. personally for yourself yes yes so somebody watching us you may have been born in a christian family even go to a, a christian church but that does not mean that you are born again oh 100% yes you have sure. to encounter the lord jesus yes where yes. now that experience that have been taught by your parents mm. now it becomes a personal experience yeah. now it is no more a story that your father said now it is your story yes okay that's beautiful was it tony how about you well uh i didn't grow up in a christian home um, I, my parents were were catholic but it wasn't like you they, they would go to church every sunday or be very religious we were not at all i grew up really being maybe on the other side where i shouldn't have been i grew up uh my father owned a cafe an italian cafe 
So I was heading in the wrong direction. But I always knew in my heart that there was something that was, I didn't know how to explain it, that was speaking to me or I didn't know a what nudge. it was. A nudge, yes, a nudge. And it always kept me from going really on the other side. My friends would end up in jail, they would end up drug addicts, and still the Lord would save me, but I didn't know at that time. And uh, later on, my wife started coming to this church. And you know very well, when she came the first time and I met you, you asked me some questions, and today I'm so ashamed of those <laughs> questions, that how I answered you, but at that time I did not know. Uh, and the same month, she ended up getting baptized. And you made an altar call. And at that moment, while you made that, I was in my head, I was saying, no, I'm not getting up. I am not getting up. <laughs> and at the same time, my son and I, we both got up at the same time. Oh, and at, I was struggling, really. I did not want to get up because in my head- So I your said, body said no. <laughs> my body said no, but my, I guess my spirit, spirit inside of yes. me was saying yes. And people were looking at us, they said, oh my God, look how nice it is. Your son and you, you got up at the same time. We had never spoke. We just got up at the same time. That was the Spirit of God that was leading us. And, and later on, even though at that time, I did not know what it meant or what I had just did. I was really... You were just uh, responding to the tug. I was responding to the tug. So uh, until maybe a month later after that, just before I was going to get baptized, that day, uh, and we were speaking about it with <laughs> the pastors before, like, did you know the day that the Lord touched you? And I do, because I could never forget that day. It's, it was October 18th. Wow, you remember the date. Yes. Oh, okay. And there was something that I had never experienced before, which is, now today I know it's the Lord, but I felt that presence all the way home. And that's when I knew, I said, God is real. Mm -hmm. I, this is the Lord. This is what I've been searching all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the tug that I had when I was young, that I had no idea what it was, that no drug could have fulfilled, no love of even of another person could have fulfilled, only the love of Christ. Wow, I want you to know, to all the precious listeners, thank you, it is not an accident that you are watching this. In fact, the reason you're watching is because the Spirit of God is already tugging your heart. Just like Pastor Tony said, without him realizing there was a nudge. You saw, you saw that with Pastor Sean's testimony. There was a nudge inside the heart. If you will really look into your heart, you can testify that that has also been your experience that without you being overtly religious, there has always been a tug inside you. And that is the sweet love of Jesus. Just calling you and saying, my sweet child, I'm here. That tug, that memory. I'll tell you why. Because we, by ourselves, with our own strength, we don't have the power to respond to God. You see? So if you even have a thought of Jesus throughout the day, even if you are going to do something and you feel like, no, I shouldn't do this, that nudge, that thought, is not you because we by ourselves we are not capable for righteousness that's what the bible says so if there is a nudge towards doing the right thing that nudge comes from the lord that is the presence of the lord in your life think about it you don't see him you don't hear him but you felt his nudge and that same nudge is what has led you to this video even today Yes. Pastor Chris, tell me about your story. Well, Dad, my, uh, my story, I remember growing up in a very traditional Orthodox, Greek Orthodox home. Uh, just like Pastor Tony, we, did, we didn't really uh, go to church unless there was a holiday. So I grew up in Greece and... Uh, and my environment was all about, uh, you know, tradition. And uh, so uh, I think that was a big limitation in my life. Because Are you religious? 
I wasn't. I wasn't religious, but I know that I know that God had His hand on my life from a young age. So, at what point were you starting to? I, uh, I I I recall there was one instance when I was really young. I was traveling with my with my mother and my uh, my sister on a boat. We were going to one of the islands, and there was a man who uh, who came, and he wasn't a Greek priest. Usually, you know, a Greek priest would have the beard and the and the hair and the the, the long. Uh, you know, uh, gown and... Uh, Is that why you have a hair? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I just want to make sure you're, you're not headed. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not heading back. <laughs> so, it looks uh, good. It's a joke. Okay. <laughs> so I remember, I remember when, uh, when uh, we're on the boat and this gentleman came and he said, and he was speaking to my mother a little bit and, and he was speaking to her about, about Jesus. And, and he looks at me and he says, oh, you have a light, he oh. said. And I didn't know what that meant because I was, I was young. I just wanted to go. There was an arcade nearby, you know, in the boat to play. And, and you said you were 50. At that age, I was about 10, 11. 10, so you were, you were the one 15, who said 15. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he left the Bible. He left the Bible. And uh, I never opened the Bible. You see, like the Lord... Uh, I believe it says that when Jesus said, uh, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the ones who are lost. So, so I believe the Lord is seeking for, for those, you know, and he was seeking me at a young age, but I never opened that Bible. Now, getting older, we come to Canada, I was living in Canada, and, uh, and I was living my life. Just, just regular, thinking that everything is okay. And, uh, but there was something missing. You know, I was married and I just had a, a newborn little girl and, uh, and we got invited to come to this church from uh, my wife's sister. And when we did come, I felt different. There was something different. And I knew that that was missing in my life. Wow, just that feeling. Yes. Of God. Yes. Wow. And I hadn't experienced that before, even though I used to go once in a while to a Greek church and, and attend. I hadn't experienced that feeling. The presence of God. Yes. The presence of God. If you, like we were talking about it again with the pastors, when was it that you got saved? You know, I, I don't recall. Mm. You know, I know many. You can't people, pinpoint. I can't pinpoint the day. day and say this was the day. Uh, a lot of people say, when did you give your life to the Lord? And I, and I thought about that. And I think about that when people ask that. And, and, and I'm thinking, I don't know if I gave my life to the Lord rather than He gave life to me. Yeah. For me, it was more Him giving and me receiving. Yes. So it, it wasn't like a, there was an altar call and then you no. went forward. That makes sense even with my life because if you were to ask me where was that one day where I went forward I can't for crying out loud remember but you can say every day <laughs> yes every day is an opportunity to lay our lives down at the feet of the Lord yes, yes. Um, so I want to encourage our dear viewers uh, they, they, there are many times when people think about Christianity and um, their relationship with God, they're turned off mostly because of the religion that they were exposed to. Yes. Most sure. of you would, would agree with would that. Agree. Yes. Yes. yes, for sure. Religion is very boring. Yes. But there is a place where you can start enjoying the relationship with Amen. God. Yes, yes. that's it. That becomes very exciting. That relationship with Jesus. Yes, yes. And, and this is why the Bible says that if the Prince of Darkness, if they would have known what they were doing, they would have never crucified. So I won't, uh, I won't take much of your time. Uh, probably we will continue this Sunday. You know, pastors, you should come back. Can't, can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> yes. can't wait. Oh my goodness. You should join me again. Yeah, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice there's one thing 
is that Satan, when he plotted against, we'll go more, more in depth on Sunday, but when Satan was plotting the death of Jesus, what he thought was to turn people against his words in the lifetime of Jesus. So three and a half years, every time Jesus was teaching, there would be Pharisees that would call blasphemy and say they're wrong and, and make sure that he was a villain. They would go to the extent of, at one point, saying that he's demon possessed. So at one point they realize, hey, no matter what we're saying, it's not affecting him. So let's make him demonic. So they went to the extent of saying that this guy is possessed. That means what they were trying to do was that even if Jesus then did a miracle, sure, it's a demon possessed man doing a miracle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they did everything to make sure that his ministry would not be accepted by people. So Satan, that was behind that. He worked hard to make sure that by the end of the ministry of Jesus, there would be nobody with him. Oh my goodness. To the point yeah. where even his disciples fled from him. Yeah. Yeah. With leaving just John the beloved mm -hmm. and the mother of Jesus, just few people at the foot of the cross. Oh. And Satan laughed and he mocked his success. This was the big plan that the creator had. He sent somebody. And he said, oh, I'm going to now use, I'm going to talk to these people and I'm going to convert them. And he said, this was the great plan of the great creator. Look, at the end of his ministry, there's one disciple at the cross. If numbers were a success, hmm. Jesus would have been the greatest failure. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. And there he is, alone, dying on the cross. The greatest mystery that Satan did not account for. That it was not during the lifetime, but it was by giving his life that he would have adoption of sons. Come on, Come amen. On. Yes. Wow. That that was a seed that would fall and die on the ground. Wow. Okay? Now, without getting too complicated, it goes back to Genesis the promise of God on the earth, as long as the heaven and earth remains, that there would be seed time and harvest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus became the seed that died. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that there may be harvest of many sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't want to, I don't want to go too much. We'll cover that on Sunday. <laughs> okay. But this is the mystery that the devil did not comprehend. So when you see intellects that are baffled by this idea that God would die for humans, look, it's not just them that are baffled. Even Satan, the Bible says, the prince of this world, if he knew that, if he knew that this was a setup, he would have not allowed Jesus to die. It's true. Yeah. He thought that by undermining the ministry of Jesus while he was alive, by accusing him, by slandering him, that he would win. But that was the great setup. His death gave us an entrance to have access Amen. into Him. Yes. Praise God. Okay. Praise Jesus. Amen. So the question then goes, what was the need for His death? Now we understand the setup, but what was the need for? Because throughout the scriptures, from Genesis chapter 1, you, you see that God is a God of principle. Okay, In order for him to be the perfect judge, he had to have laws that he would even have to apply on his own creation. Mm -hmm. Okay, And so humans being his creation, he said, the day you shall sin, you will die. die. Okay, The law of God was the day you sin, you will die. die. Satan who knew that, we know the story of how he got in the garden and deceived Eve. Okay, again, this is something we'll try and discuss on Sunday. That moment when sin entered humans is the, is the moment when death entered humans. Now, the only way to redeem somebody from that sin was that there must be another death in that place of that individual. 
So then comes the understanding of the Old Testament sacrifices, yeah. where goats and doves were sacrificed instead of that individual, so that that individual would have redemption. Yeah, substitute. Yes, yeah. yeah, substitution. But the problem with that was, how long could a goat sacrifice yeah. work? Yeah. A year before he has another sin? Yeah. How long before a dove works? The longevity. They could not carry it to eternity, okay? Because the Bible talks about, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, God, go on, go on. <laughs> there is life in the blood, but the the value of blood is different with different species. Oh wow! Mm. So the, it's not the value of a goat dying. Versus the value of a chicken dying is different. Oh, wow. Mm. This is something okay. I've never heard before. <laughs> <laughs> the value of a chicken dying is different from the value of a human being dying. Unique in his own ways. Now, what about a spirit being? Wow. Oh, wow. What about the divine nature of Jesus? Yeah. So, just without <laughs> giving you too much information, the, the blood is not all equal. That is the introduction of the perfect blood. There are many things that happen with the cross. Many things. The mystery of the cross. Many. We will... Impossible for us to finish with just today. So we'll definitely try to cover those things. One of it was ascension. Satan did not realize that at the cross, Whatever happens at that point is going to allow Jesus to ascend to the right hand side of the yeah. he, he couldn't see beyond cross. Ah. That was the mystery. Yeah. Okay. Now another thing that Satan missed is the distribution of grace that would multiply with cross. Because cross was the seed. If you understand how the seed works, one seed brings many other seeds. Yeah. So cross was the point of multiplication. Okay, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. If you look at in the New Testament, every time Jesus prayed and broke the bread, there was multiplication. Yes. Yes. So breaking on the cross was also the multiplication. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so that means, pastors, yeah. when. Jesus was on the earth. If you study who got healed, there were people that came in contact with him. There were people that were in his vicinity. There were people that was around him. They had to come in contact. They had to travel down to where he was. They had to bring that healing to. They had to get in personal vicinity of the Lord Jesus. Then if you study what the cross did, he said, by his stripes, we are healed. So what does the cross do? It amplifies, it multiplies. Breaking Jesus on the cross causes the amplification of what he carried on earth for that three and a half years. But Three and a half years, you had to get into close proximity of Jesus. You had to locate where he was. You had to go there and stand in the line. You had to <laughs> knock on the door. They had to Track fight people for, on yeah. the roof. Yes, I, exactly. Get on the roof, yeah. break it down, get to where he was. But what cross did was cross became the point of amplification, which if the I, prince of this world knew, he would have never killed Jesus. Wow. All of you will be catching a bus to Jerusalem now. <laughs> it will take a long time before you reach there. Yeah. But the cross, the mystery of the cross, like I said, there are many mysteries hidden in, in the, in the, within this. Satan didn't know that. Satan thought, man, this guy is uh, creating a walk three and a half years, but you know what? We'll finish him. And then the kingdom of darkness was rejoicing that they had finished mm. him. But the mystery that they did not know 
was that it was not the finishing it was the beginning yes <laughs> amen yep. they thought it was division but it was multiplication uh, yeah. wow. it was the amplification yes. of whatever jesus carried now through wow. by this seed that was sown they would be an harvest unto eternity unto the end time what happened on the cross expanded to time expanded to generations and thousands of years later today you and i we can still tap into what happened on the cross yeah. simply because the kingdom of darkness did not realize that this was not the end this was the beginning right. yeah. <laughs> that was a setup they did not realize Three days from now, the resurrection power would raise Jesus back. Hallelujah. And now, Jesus is no more limited to a location. Mm. <laughs> He is raised up to the right hand side of the Father. That allowed for the continuation of the other mystery of the Helper, yes. whom we call the Holy Spirit. Remember the words of Jesus I'm trying to connect too many dots in yes, here yes. in a small time Jesus said it is to your advantage that I leave yes so there there's, wow. there's he prophesied his own crucifixion and he's saying that when I leave I will send you the help of the holy spirit okay so the crucifixion of Jesus brought an introduction to the helper the holy spirit that is with us yes. who is going to help us understand Jesus who is helping us understand what we can receive through Jesus who is helping us to understand that by his stripes we are healed but who is bringing that healing from the cross to us it is the helper the holy spirit i believe that tonight or today whatever time you're watching this video is going to bring healing and miracles into your body in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I want you to expect that right now. Yeah. I believe it is a possibility that as people are watching they can begin to tap into this healing what you of the Lord. Yeah. Can I just stop you there dad? Cuz now that you said that we've been receiving some um testimonies on online and I I have what I have one right here and it's from a um, it's from a lady called Ruby and um she's just given or recently given birth and she had a case of prolapse um so it's a, when um, I think it's when an organ is is shifted out of place so it's not in its proper place and after the after the birth the doctor said that she needs to take special care of herself she shouldn't move she shouldn't lift anything like that Um one of the Sundays that that you spoke she uh you'd said that um to put your hand on the infirmity that was giving you trouble and um and she did that and 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 you prayed and then there was a time soon after that where she'd gone to visit the doctor to see how she was doing um and the doctor said that there was no trace of the prolapse and that her core muscles are very strong and she doesn't need to worry. Wow. That's so crazy. she goes and says praise God and praise God for the word that that has wow. brought her healing. Wow. 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 I don't know if you are ready for your healing today. But I want you to get ready to bring your testimonies. Email us your testimonies um on a social media or a website. Let us know. Ronte Brocosia the presence of the Lord hallelujah is here the presence of the Lord is filling this studio and I know it is coming for you on your behalf I see the Lord releasing grace over a crying mother I see miracles happening over your children there are things that has been hindering you 
I want to take authority and cancel operations right now. Amen. Because the Jesus that I preach he is alive. Amen. The Jesus that we are talking about he is alive and well. Yes. He died for you. So many things happened on the cross. One of the foremost thing is the salvation of your soul. Yes. That whoever believes in Christ they should not perish. but have everlasting life so your faith in Christ the death of Jesus that now you remember the the law in that I talked about in the old testament that the one who commits sin must die okay so Jesus now became the ultimate sacrifice by dying on the cross that means when you have committed a sin you don't have to die in that place because Jesus has now become the ultimate or the perfect sacrifice. Thank you, Lord. The reason Jesus can be the perfect sacrifice is because Jesus had no sin in him. So a blood that has no sin is the most perfect sacrifice that can ever be shed on anybody's Thank behalf. You, that gives that blood the power to speak for all humanity. Amen. Amen. That includes you. So dear friend it doesn't matter how exhausted and weary you have been with guilt and condemnation and and the burden of sin today the lord has miraculously brought you to this video and i believe that he wants to save you and not just save you he wants to heal you yes. not just heal you whatever spirits of darkness remember the words that i read in the beginning that the prince of this darkness he di- he didn't know that this was a setup that the crucifixion of jesus would become the amplification of your deliverance he wow. opened the green knowledge if he knew that he would have never wow. killed jesus so that means that every demon that is disturbing you troubling your house what i'm saying right now i say as i prophetically look into your house spiritually the lord is going to cause certain spirits to leave yes. your house yes amen yes that's what is happening god is going to cause certain spirits to leave your environment as you connect with us by simple faith so may i by faith call you the child of god and say dear child of god now is a time for you to pause now is a time for you to take a minute and say wow on this good friday i remember that jesus left heaven came down was born as a man and became that ultimate sacrifice yes yes that grace is filling you right now You know right now as I talk some people you might feel like you you're trembling. You, Don't be surprised. You remember the presence of God that the, these gentlemen were talking about. That presence of God is touching you right now. Yes. That presence of God is filling your home right now. You may not realize it but demons that are watching you watch this video they're already trembling because they know their time has come to an end. Amen. So I want to give you this opportunity. Right now, if you have never come to that place where you've said, "Dear Jesus, I want to surrender my life at your feet. I want to accept you as my Lord and my Savior." Whether you are already in a Christian family, whether you are a uh, was like Pastor Tony or Pastor Chris whatever your situation has been right now now is the time where you can ask the Lord Jesus the glory and the preeminence and the greatness of the Lord Jesus is going to fill your life come on would you begin this Jesus journey with us today yes. today if that is you please put your hands on your heart and say this prayer after me if possible if you are able to go ahead go on your knees in your home and talk to Jesus as i lead you into this prayer say this out as loud as you can 
because the Bible says those who believe in their heart, so believe is important, and those who confess with their mouth will then be saved. So I want to give you that opportunity because that's a command of the Lord. When you says that you shall be saved, that means that there is a guarantee that today, if you were to die, you will be in heaven. Praise Your God. sins that condemn you, that burden you, is being washed away by the blood of Jesus. Yes. I'm going to pray for healings. Before that, I want to release you into the kingdom of God. Pray with me, please. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed about who is around you. Close the door if you if if needed and say this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for this opportunity. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I don't want to live my life on autopilot. I don't want my life to lead me. I want you to be the Lord of my life. Dear Jesus, today I submit to your Lordship. You are the King of my life. Come into my heart. Come into my home. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I receive your grace. From today, I am the child of God. And I take authority. Now what I'm telling you, I want you to do this with confidence and boldness because I'm going to lead you into your first spiritual warfare. Yeah, get ready. So I want you to be bold because right now you are a child of God. I want you to say this. I take authority, I take authority. In, the in the name of Jesus. Every demon, every, demon. every, darkness, every darkness that has been fighting me, been fighting, me. fighting my family, fighting my house, fighting my body, I command you in the name of Jesus. Be removed out of my life. Infirmities. Sickness. Disease. Be removed out of my life. Out of my house. Death. In the name of Jesus. Be removed from my life. I receive financial blessings. I receive financial blessings. I receive my healing. I receive my healing. I receive the peace of Jesus. I receive the peace of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name. Jesus mighty name. I am free. I am free. I am loved. I am loved. And I am blessed. And I am blessed. In Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Oh, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Oh, you are today, this moment, the Bible says, your name is written in the book of life. Amen. So we want to welcome you. We want to welcome you into this journey. So take it forward from here and step by step. Learn more about your faith. Learn more about what the Lord Jesus has done for you. Learn more of the spiritual authority you have as a child of God. Uh, we would love for you to attend a church locally. But if you can't find, I hope you will at least journey with us through this YouTube channel. And we are hoping that week after week, the word that is being posted here will cause your spirit to grow. That you will grow spiritually. And when your spirit man is growing, then you will see changes around you. You will see physical changes. You will see your mind being renewed. You will see transformation in your family. Your children. Every area will begin to look brighter and colorful when your spirit comes alive. So I introduce you to the Lord Jesus. I will bring breakthrough in every area of your life. Oh, so we're so glad that, that you could join us. I want you to prepare yourself. If you can find a bread, 
some grape juice, bring it along because right now you are a child of God and we want to introduce you to your first communion time. And I want you to expect miracles to happen. Amen. It's already happening. Yes. Miracles are already happening. I want you to get ready to go into greater levels in your walk with God. So I'm very excited that you're part of us. I'm so glad that you can start this journey with us. And I look forward, hopefully, you can join us again this Sunday. Wow, once more, congratulations to all of you who've just given your lives to Jesus Christ. This is the best decision you could ever make in your lives. Just before we go on and we get into having the communion together, we want to take this moment to give an offering unto the Lord. This is something that we do usually because we want to celebrate the goodness of God. And right now, being Good Friday, we want to celebrate the fact that God sent His only Son to die on the cross for our sins, that we might have eternity with Him in heaven forever. So right now, I want to give you that opportunity. Go ahead and begin to give your offerings for those of you that are joining us from around the world and you've been with us before, you know what to do. Right now on the screen, there is uh, the information link there that you can go to our website to www.revivenations.org slash give and you can give your offerings right now. So just take a moment and go online. You can do that right now. And while you're there as well, comment down below and let us know where you're watching from. Communicate. We're a big family from all around the world. That's right. We're not just here in Montreal. We're from all over the world. We're one big family. It has been such an incredible time as we've gone through this word. What an incredible word we heard. And how about those testimonies? Those three pastors. You know, yes, Right now, you might be sitting in your room and saying, you know, wow, the Lord saved my life, but what does He have in store for me? Child of God, the best is yet to come. 
God has so much in store for you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And you've only now just begun to taste of the goodness of the Lord. And as it unfolds, you will see that you will be drawn to give more and more glory and praise to Jesus, our King. My name is Pastor Steve. I'm one of the pastors here at Emmanuel Church. And I'm joined together by Pastor Carlo, who is the lead pastor of the One for All Church in Montreal. He serves under the Revive Nations organization. Pastor Carlo, welcome. Thank you for having me and what a pleasure it is to be with you, especially on this day, such a special day. Mm. Such a special day. Yeah, this is, a, it's been an incredible journey that we've been having, you know, just getting to fall in love with Jesus and, and, and to really go back to the table where he was with his disciples. Amazing to know that this king that we serve actually says that he's doing this for us. Mm, yeah. You know, that's so beautiful to know that, you know, he's a giving God. Yeah. Speaking of the scriptures, I have it open right here in Luke chapter 22. If you have your Bibles with you, you can join along very quickly. In Luke chapter 22, I'm going to start reading at verse 14, Pastor. It says, And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles were with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks. And it says, And he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you, and to do this in remembrance of me. Wow. This is, this is my body. So beautiful. And why do we do this? Yeah. To remember Him. That's it. To remember the sacrifice. Yeah. To remember the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, it's interesting as you started reading, it says, I desire, I, he, he says it twice in that verse, that He desires to, to be with His disciples, mm -hmm. to be with Him. And as we know, we serve this living God. Mm -hmm. And this living God, you know, He says when two or three are gathered in His name, He is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, he desires still today. And he goes on from there, Pastor, and he says, Likewise, it says, Also having broken the bread, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Such, Man, a, God. such a powerful Man, statement. God. Such a powerful statement. He's saying, This cup, mm. this, this here is the New Testament. You know, we think the New Testament is words. The New Testament, this is my blood. So because of this, because of this blood, I have part in eternity. Because of the blood of Jesus, we're saved. You know, it reminds me of that verse in the Bible where it says, by his stripes we're healed. You have been healed spiritually. And that is why now we come to the table of remembrance, to remember the goodness of our God. And remembering this, this is not just about doing this now, but this is a promise that we will sit with our Master, that we will be in eternity with Him forever. So every time you see this, we remember the goodness of God. People of God, wherever you are right now, would you take those elements, bring them close together? We want to partake of this together. And what the Bible says that when Jesus was with His disciples, it says He took the bread, and he blessed it and broke it. We want to take right now the bread in our hands and we want to bless it and we want to break it as Jesus did. Heavenly Father, Jesus, we thank you for your body. We thank you for coming and dying on the cross for our sins. Jesus, we thank you because you, O King, have broken the sting of death. You, O Lord, have given us eternal life through your body that was broken for us your flesh. You came and gave us life. We thank you, Lord. And Father, we bless this bread now as we remember Jesus, your body that was broken for us on the cross. Amen. It says he took the bread and he broke it in the presence of his disciples. And it says, likewise, 
he took the cup. He says, it might be wine, but he says, this wine is the New Testament, which is Jesus' blood that was shed on the cross for us. And because of that blood, we have been healed. And he took the blood, the wine, and he poured it out. And let's pray for the wine. Heavenly Father, we thank you, not for the wine, but for the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that through your Son, Jesus Christ, we have been healed, not only from sickness and disease and every infirmity, but we have been healed in our soul, we have been healed in our mind, we have been healed in our finances, we have been healed in every area of life where we have been stricken, where we have been attacked by the enemy. And Lord, we want to give you all the praise and glory because God, you have given us freedom and liberty, you have caused us to reign as kings. Lord, you have caused your glory to come upon us. And we celebrate you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to take the bread and the wine together right now, man of God. Thank you. Let's take the bread together, shall we? took the wine and passed it as well. Man of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus, we thank you.
Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto me. Je t'aime.